gospel, changing our communities by being doctrinally sound, missionally driven, and culturally sensitive, which includes culturally appropriate evangelism, leaders mentoring the next generation of leaders, and churches planting churches through great commandment love, great commission purpose, and great confession dependency. I'm going to have Royce and Josh from Red Sea Church come up and share a story that illustrates this uh, part, a uh, uh, snippet of this fulfillment of uh, next generation uh, leaders mentoring the next generation of leaders. And so I'm going to have them share from their perspective how God has been working this into the life of Red Sea Church. So Josh and Royce, the is yours. <laughs> Convergence is CB Northwest's three-year training program to raise up skilled shepherds within the local church. And right now we have 24 guys in the program. Um, many of them are here. So if you're either in Convergence now or a graduate of Convergence, I'd ask that you stand up. Okay. Convergence graduates on, as trustees. Um, we also have a number who are not here because many of them, specifically if they're in the program, are bivocational. So they're working at, and they're and raising their families as they're training. So that's a lot of hard work too. And um, raising up leaders in the local church is an intentional journey. It's, it's hard work. And um, the um, like the financial investments we saw there is there sometimes it takes a plan and it takes a while. We need to plan our work and then we need to work our plan. And, uh, for, and it's a lot of hard work for local churches and the community and the leaders and the guys doing the work and their families often overlooked is the price that's paid by the wives and the families as these guys come and do the training and, and do a lot of hard work over those three years and beyond. And I know this not only because I'm the director of Convergence, but also because um, I'm also an elder in a, a local church in North Portland called Red Sea. And we have committed to raising up elder level shepherds and in our in our local small local church, and, um, and we've invested in that. So I've asked Josh to come up and share a little bit about his journey as being raised up as a shepherd within Red Sea. Um, uh, about six years ago, um, my wife and I um, moved up to Portland, and uh, we, when we landed, we wanted to find a church where we could find family. And a, and a church where we could be on mission together. And so God led us to Red Sea. Um, and we started out serving, uh, serving in the children's community, teaching second graders, which is a, a great way to start if you want to get involved in a church. And, and that uh, moved to leading in the men's community. Uh, so you, you guys know in church, if you do something, you do it well, they're going to ask you to do something else. And they just keep giving more things to do. Uh, and so from the men's community, we moved to leading a home community. And then from a home community, we entered into the, uh, well, I entered into the elder process at our church and, and then was installed as an elder uh, about a year later. Uh, and at that point, I was pretty content with, uh, with all that God had for us. Uh, we were, I was working a, a nine to five job that I love, uh, being able to serve the local church and, and being able to be family um, with uh, some brothers and sisters that I just love out in North Portland. Um, but, uh, you know, according to God, that wasn't his plan uh, and he wanted more. And so uh, my uh, church elders approached me and said, you know, we believe that, that uh, uh, you could be a, a staff elder at this church, and, uh, and we want to begin to equip and train you to do that, uh, to lead at Red Sea. Uh, and that was hard for me to accept, because I was, I was really content with where I was uh, in, in my life. And I told them I would do it on one condition, that they trained me to do it, and that they promised not to leave, because I didn't want to do it on my own. Uh, and they committed to that. And, uh, and so I, I made the commitment to uh, enter into the Convergence program as a part of my training uh, to be prepared to lead the church. Um, I was blessed, luckily, after that to be able to come on staff at Red Sea uh, as, a, as a staff elder. And so uh, today I'm, I'm two years into the program, uh, having learned an incredible amount uh, over the last two years, because in all reality, I had no idea what I was doing. Uh, and Convergence has prepared me theologically it's prepared me uh, to face the challenges of ministry um, and, uh, and uh, also to be able to, to really understand what it is God is calling us to do 
uh, in the local church. And so I just want to challenge uh, those of you who are the pastors or lead pastors particularly, if you can't look into your church and find someone, a, a man that you are mentoring and modeling to, to, uh, to lead, then you're setting your church up for suffering at some point in the future uh, in your absence to go through a time of hardship. Um, and so I would encourage you to do that if you're a pastor that wants to talk about convergence, that wants to get more information about the program, uh, Royce would love to talk to you about that. And if you're a, um, a guy in the church that uh, you believe God's calling you to lead and you have questions about convergence, I would love to talk to you about it, about the, about the program. Uh, and, uh, and also the other incredible blessing that I've received from the program is a community of guys that I'm walking with. There's, there's 12 guys in my cohort. Uh, and this weekend, I spent the majority of my time with the guys in my cohort. Uh, these are guys that know my story. They know what's going on in my church. Uh, they know how hard it is. Uh, and we meet. Uh, we study the word together. We cry together. We repent together. Uh, and, and we continue serving and leading together. And so that's one of those missing elements I see so many times in guys in the ministry. They're, they're very alone. Uh, or they feel very alone. And I, and I don't feel that. I feel like I have a group of brothers that, I, that I'm walking with, that even after convergence ends, we're going to continue to walk the journey together with in holiness and, and pursuing God and loving the local church. So if you have any questions, I'd love to talk to you about the program. Uh, if you're looking for a way to train the men of your church, uh, definitely consider using this resource. It's, a, it's been invaluable for us as a, as a community church. Thank you, guys. Thank you.